Today I bring you one of my favorite builds for open maps like Arabia. Since you can only build Militia in the Dark Age, the Drush is the only aggressive build that you can do at this point in the game. Normally a Drush Fast Castle build has you building the barracks at around 6.5 minutes, whereas the Persian Drush has you building at around 2.5 minutes. This means that you can get to your opponent's base 4 minutes faster at around 5 minutes and 50 seconds, which is at 16 villagers. Pretty much no build will have Loom at this point unless they're Mayans, Chinese, or Goths since they start the game with it, so there's a very good chance that you'll get a villager kill if you can block quick walls with your scout on the enemy woodline or berries. There's no way to completely destroy your opponent in the Dark Age since they can just garrison their villagers in their TC and kill anything that you can throw at them. There also aren't any ranged units that you can build in the Dark Age, so your opponent can easily quick wall villagers. This is why when you're drushing, you have to have an idea for what your transition will be. With this build, I'll be transitioning into 3 TC Boom with a few knights to clean up any feudal army and have some map presence. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you'll enjoy the Persian Drush. So, let's talk about the Drush. What's the goal of the Drush? 1. To gain map control. 2. Scouting or map presence. 3. Doing temporary damage, which can be forcing walls or idle time. This is a one-time cost. And 4. Doing permanent damage, which is killing villagers with a scout. This damages the opponent for the rest of the game. So, what do these goals allow us to achieve? Gaining map control allows us to safely expand to resources, control where major fights will be, for example taking a hill advantage, and denying opponents from expanding. The difference between map control and scouting is that scouting allows you to get information on your opponent, whereas map control allows you to do something with that information. Doing temporary damage delays and distracts the opponent. They will still have the same income once their villagers go back to work though. Killing villagers is the best outcome, since this is permanent damage to your opponent's economy. It's very difficult to kill villagers if your opponent reacts properly. You probably won't get any villager kills if your drush is scouted beforehand, assuming your opponent reacts properly. The surprise factor is very important for this build to do big damage. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at the build. First, build two houses with the starting three villagers, and then put six villagers on sheep. This is standard for most builds. During this time, you should be scouting for your boars and other sheep since you'll be needing all the food that you can get. It's also good to scout where you'll be walling as you'll start your walls when you need to be controlling your militia, so you won't have a lot of time to think about where you want to place them at that time. Since you'll only be taking two sheep before taking boar, you can safely scout with all of the other sheep. Just make sure that you have two sheep under your town center and you'll be fine. Scouting is very important with this build. Once you find your boars and sheep, immediately go to your opponent's base and try to find his lumber camp and berries. You need to find out where to send the militia. Sometimes your opponent's berries will be far enough away from his town center for you to send the militia there, but will oftentimes be too close to the town center to safely attack. The lumber camp is usually where you'll get the damage done. You have to scout the path that you'll be walking with your militia so you don't get too close to buildings, which will reveal your militia before they reach the target. As I said earlier, the surprise factor is important for this build to be really successful. Okay, so this next villager needs to bring in the first boar at the same time that the second sheep finishes. Sometimes you'll have to send a villager that's already collecting sheep if the boar is far away. You'll get the timing with practice. Just make sure that you have seven on boar at this point. The eighth villager is the one that will be building the barracks. First send her out to where you want to build the barracks and build a house. Queue up the barracks beside it. As an optimization, you can get the house to around 50% complete and then start the barracks, but it's not necessary to do it this way. This will allow you to get your militia out 10 seconds faster though. The reason you start the house first is that the militia only take 21 seconds to complete and houses take 25. You'd be housed if you built the house after the barracks. It also allows you to collect a little more food, which should allow you to easily keep your town center and barracks running at the same time. Once the barracks is complete, you'll have enough wood for another house. Make another house next to the barracks and shift queue this villager back to a straggler tree. Since you don't have any more wood, you'll have to collect from straggler trees to afford a lumber camp. The two villagers that come out after the barracks villager go to straggler trees. Make sure to queue up a militia as soon as the barracks completes. The next villager has to bring in the next boar just as the first one is finished. Villager number 12 goes to boar, so you should have 9 on boar at this point. 
make sure to force drop food as you need it. You'll be doing this a lot while you're still making militia. You should be able to constantly keep the town center and barracks running up until you have three militia. If your food doesn't quite add up, prioritize villager production over militia. The next three villagers go to wood. You need to collect 100 wood for a lumber camp and around 50 wood so your mill on berries goes up on time. Once you have 100 on wood, send one of the lumberjacks to start building the lumber camp. And once you have around 50 more wood, send the five villagers collecting straggler trees to wood around the lumber camp. During this time, you should have all of your militia ready. Send the militia to your target across the map. This is the most difficult part of the build since you'll need to micro your militia as well as manage your economy. Once your boar runs out, keep six of the nine hunters on sheep and send three of them to straggler trees with the intention of sending them to berries once you can afford a mill. Just to be safe, villager number 16 should long distance mine 10 gold so that you have the option to get loom. Unloomed villagers will easily get picked off by the enemy scout if they're by themselves. So if you don't know where your opponent's scout is, then it can be a good idea to add in loom early. Once the villager's done bringing back 10 gold, he can go to berries. Villager number 17 should go to berries as well so that you have a total of 5 there. 3 from the boar, 1 from gold, and this one. You can see that I was a little late sending the villager to gold, but it doesn't matter too much. As long as you have 6 on wood, 6 on sheep, and 5 on berries, then you're on the right track. The next two villagers need to go build walls. There's a good chance your opponent will be clicking up shortly if he's going for scouts, so it's important to get walls up to stop him from getting into your base. If you don't have loom, you have to be careful of the enemy's scout. It's a really good idea to damage the enemy's scout down to 21 HP or less so that an unloomed villager can beat it. It's worth it to fight the enemy scout with your scout until this point if you can. Of course, you still need your scout to be somewhat healthy to chase fleeing villagers with your drush, but your 21 HP scout will still do the job. Don't worry about the wood cost of your walls too much. You'll have more than enough wood to get some really long walls. These next three villagers go to wood. Build another lumber camp so that you have four on one and five on the other. Eventually your walling villagers will go to wood as well, which will bring you up to 11 villagers on wood. It's a good idea to take wood further away from your opponent if possible, since feudal age archers can be a problem as you won't have an army to defend when going up to the castle age. If there's one thing that you have to do with this build, it's getting the walls up in time. It gets pretty tricky at this point, since you're paying attention to your Drush while managing your economy. It's probably a good idea to practice this against the AI before trying it in an actual game. These next two villagers that come out build a mining camp and take gold. Sending them now will allow you to have pretty much exactly 200 gold at the time that you need it to click up to the Castle Age. You won't be needing any gold in the Feudal Age other than the Castle Age cost, so it's best to not have too many villagers on gold. If you have to build defensive militia or archers, make sure to send more to gold. You could, as a variation, get Man at Arms in Feudal Age if you still have your Drush alive and you think it could still do damage. In this case, you'd want to send one more villager to gold. So, we're gonna do something a bit crazy here. The next five villagers, in addition to the shepherds once sheep runs out, build Dark Age farms. These farms don't have horse color, so they'll expire pretty early, but it's important to get them up as soon as possible so that you have enough food to click up to the Castle Age. Basically, as soon as you have 60 wood, get another farm until you have all 11 villagers farming. You'll have to send villagers to straggler trees when you don't have enough wood. It's important to not remove straggler trees by placing a farm over them, since you will be and have been collecting wood from them at many points in this build. You don't have to wait for a villager to be created to get a farm. You can begin transferring shepherds as soon as you get 60 wood, as your sheep will be running out soon anyways. As long as you end up with 11 on farms on the way up to Feudal Age, then you'll have enough food to click up to the Castle Age. There's a very good chance that your opponent is up to Feudal Age at this time, you should be expecting feudal pressure in the form of scouts, archers, towers, men-at-arms, or a combination of any of these. I'm not going to go over how to react to each of these different feudal plays, but a lot of the time it will involve using villagers to make a second layer of walls behind where the opponent is attacking. If you do this, you may have to delay your castle age by a villager or two. So, you're almost ready to click up to the feudal age. It's really important to get loom if you haven't already, since unloomed villagers die in only 5 hits to feudal scouts, and are much weaker in general. Getting loom takes just as long as a villager to create, so you can think of it this way. If you lose a single villager due to not getting loom, you'll be more behind than if you'd just gotten loom. Make sure to keep making farms, and you can click up to Feudal Age now. At this point, the build starts to slow down a bit. Your Drush might be almost dead, or your opponent might be full walled so that you can't get any more damage done. You should take a good look at the map. Figure out where you want to place your blacksmith and stable in the Feudal Age, and two additional town centers in Castle Age. If there's a hill outside your base, be careful of the enemy camping it, and even plan to make a castle there. If you have forward gold or wood, make sure that you're aware if enemy archers show up so that you don't lose any villagers. 
If your walls weren't too long, then you'll probably have enough wood for a third lumber camp. It's good to get this if you can afford it, as it'll improve efficiency and allow you to have more wood going into the castle age. I didn't end up going for the third lumber camp in this video, but I probably could have squeezed it in there. So, once you're getting pretty close to feudal age, you'll need to get villagers in position to build the blacksmith and stable. You'll be building two villagers in the feudal age, so you have 50 seconds to work with. Since the blacksmith takes 40 seconds to complete, you only need one villager to complete it. The stable takes exactly 50 seconds to build, but you won't be able to frame perfectly build it, so it's better to use two villagers to build the stable. You're going to want to build the stable on the front of your base so the knights don't have to travel as far to attack your opponent. The stable can also act as a bit of a wall. The blacksmith can be built as part of your wall as well, but it's not necessary. The two villagers that you build in Feudal Age go to gold. You should end up with four on gold when going up to the Castle Age. This will give you enough gold to produce some knights. You have to delay double bit axe and horse collar until after you've clicked up. You will just barely have enough food to go up, so it's best to prioritize going up. If your initial farm is close to being finished, then it can be better to get horse collar first before you reseed it. This might need to be done before double bit axe, depending on the game. Click up to Castle Age before the second villager completes, and you're almost done. This is where you can decide what you want to do next. I get two new town centers and produce some knights in Castle Age, but you can choose to go for a few other strategies as well. If your opponent doesn't have much military out, you could consider building a forward siege workshop and putting some pressure on him. A useful thing to keep in mind is that you need the same number of villagers on food to maintain villager production versus knight production. So, for three TCs running, we need 19 villagers on farms. If we want to have two stables and one TC running, it's the exact same food cost. For knights, you'll need to have seven on gold per stable, though. You can check out my Heroku app for the exact number of villagers required to maintain unit production. The link's in the description. There's a very good chance that your opponent will be pressuring you hard at this point. It's very important to stick to the plan if you're going for three town centers. Don't try to make a defensive archery range for skirms when you need to be investing your wood into more town centers. Wait until Castle Age for a defensive siege workshop if you're under a lot of pressure. It's also important not to invest into a defensive tower, as then you won't have the stone to build more town centers. You have a stable, so once you reach Castle Age, you can build defensive knights. You just have to retreat villagers to the town center and not lose them. If your opponent is pressuring with towers, defensive mangonels and rams will clean it up. If he has scouts, then knights will clean those up. There's really no unit that you should be afraid of once you're in Castle Age if you have a plan against them. You just have to use your best judgement, as the build is over at this point. So, have fun in Castle Age versus your opponent who's probably still in Feudal Age. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the fastest Persian Drush build. I've used it at least 20 times on the ladder, and it usually works pretty well. It takes a lot of micro early on, but it can be fun to learn since it's a pretty short build. I'll be doing more civilization specific builds from here on, so keep your eyes peeled for the next one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the ladder.